Kathy Jamieson to be followed by Nigel Dawn. Much, Deputy Presiding Officer. We are proud of Scots law and our independent legal system, but what is the point of that if the machinery of justice in Scotland does not work? Those are Lord Gill's words as he introduced his report. And he goes on to say that the study satisfied them that civil justice in Scotland is failing. It is failing to deliver justice to the citizen expeditiously, economically or efficiently. Our structures and procedures are wholly unsuited to modern conditions. They inflict needless costs on the public purse, on the Scottish Legal Aid Board and on individual litigants at every level. The system's delays are notorious and in some cases scandalous. Its procedural inefficiencies operate against the interests of justice. I don't think anyone could accuse Lord Gill of pulling his punches in the introduction to his report. And I welcome the opportunity to debate this today. These are substantial documents, and like others, I have not yet gone through in detail all 700 and odd pages. But one of the things I learned as a minister was to be able to uh, at least read the summaries fairly quickly form an initial view, a cautious welcome in this instance, but then to delve into the detail, find the devils and then come back with the bits that I didn't like and try to change them later. So I just give due warning that I'll probably do the same with this report. When I commissioned the review when I was the Minister for Justice, it was because I was acutely aware of some of the failings that Lord Gill himself has pointed out. I wanted to see our civil courts reformed because I wanted to improve, first and foremost, access to justice. I wanted to ensure that cases were dealt with at the right level in the court system. I wanted to speed up the process in the interests of the public, particularly, for example, in small claims where there were small sums involved. And I also wanted to ensure, notwithstanding the need also to focus on speeding up our criminal courts, that civil cases were not deprioritised. And I wanted to see more active management of cases as they progressed through the courts. Now, Lord Gill's words at the launch, and it has been uh, reported in uh, an excellent uh, piece in the Scotsman legal pages uh, immediately following the launch, that he did not wish his proposals to be seen as revolutionary but pragmatic. Now, without wishing to cast Lord Gill as the Che Guevara of the legal world, I suspect that some in the legal system will have met his words with a sharp intake of breath at the scale of the reforms proposed. And I do think that some of the things that he is proposing are indeed very radical. But I would suggest that it is entirely possible to be radical, revolutionary and at the same time be pragmatic and get something that works. The report is wide-ranging, as it was expected to be, and of course it is right that we take time to consider it in detail. And I hope that what we do not do today is have a polarised position between those who want to see the report adopted as a whole and those who perhaps feel that there are issues that we can take forward uh, at this particular point in time. Because the one cautionary note I would have is the scale of these reforms, and having taken through a number of pieces of legislation to reform our criminal justice system, I would suggest, um, and I'm sure that the Cabinet Secretary will not mind me saying this, that this will not be taken through in this Parliament. It may not even be completed in the next Parliament, but may go on into the one after that, when perhaps neither he nor I will still be in our uh, places here. So I, I do think we, we need to take some time to look at this. But let's also be sensible. If there are issues around the management of the courts that we can speed up at this particular point in time, let's get on and do it. Let's not simply, however, as has been suggested by Richard Baker and others, look for the cheap options and try and put them in place. Let's look for the sensible, smart options and put them in place. Management of cases. It is a bit of a no-brainer to say that you should have someone who is in charge of a case and manage it through the system. It is, of course, sensible to make greater use of IT. It is, of course, the uh, sensible way to approach things, to build on the very positive work that's been done in the specialist courts already. There are a number of issues uh, in the report which I do think that we also should give some early attention to. For example, Surely it is not too much to expect that judges would explain themselves if they are not able to issue judgments within three months of a case being concluded. It is important for people who are involved in the system that they get that information and that their cases are dealt with quickly. We have already heard about the use of mediation, alternative dispute resolution, all of those things very important. And it also makes sense, I think, to look at how we improve the public's 
education about the legal system, information that's available, the so-called Mackenzie Friends we've already heard about, and fundamental, of course, is to access to justice is concern about the costs. It should not be the case, and indeed the report actually highlights this, that justice should not just be for those who have the ability to pay. That does mean that we have advice available in a wider range of ways at the earliest stage. That means things like community law centres and court advice projects having to be expanded. But it also highlights in the report that there should be the option to make special orders in relation to expenses in courts where there is a significant public interest. And I think that that may well be helpful to those who uh, may wish to bring cases forward. Presiding officer, I realise that I don't have time to um, say much more in relation to the report today, and I do hope to have the opportunity to contribute in future debates. But I do just want to end with another couple of areas where I think uh, we should welcome. For example, the recommendation to restrict the ability to litigate by those who continue to abuse the system. That is something that ordinary people in the real world find it very difficult to understand why some people seem to be able to get access constantly to the system while they cannot get access to justice for matters that affect them. I think we should also welcome the recommendations in relation to uh, multi-party actions. I am aware that Unite and the STUC have expressed some concerns over court costs and the privative limits. I think these issues do need to be addressed and I hope that the Minister will be able to take on board those concerns and give some appropriate assurances that reform will indeed be about improving access to justice and not simply about financial savings. Presiding officer, in conclusion, this report has been described as a doorstop of a report in that article that I referred to earlier in The Scotsman. But its scale and its volume must not mean that we do nothing. As Bill Aitken, I think, uh, said, and not often that I agree with Bill, but on this occasion, the status quo isn't an option. And I would hope that the Minister will now bring forward a coherent plan to Parliament indicating how he intends to proceed and give us an opportunity to further debate the various sections of the report that we will not have time to deal with today.